Hey, Teddy here. Um, today, not only do I have some great news I'd love to be able to share with you guys, but also have lots and lots of things I need to address. First off, to start things happier, let's get on with the news. Now, I'm sure all of you are probably wondering what is going on with the next casual reviews with Bear Rib Shot for me now. Well, as I'm recording this, making of the <clears throat> making of casual reviews with Bear Rimshot, the top 11 dumbest Kingdom Hearts moments have finally begun. And yes, people, this is for really real. And if you really, really think that I'm that I was lying when I say that, then perhaps. You are mistaken, and I was just getting started making a new episode of that same series, but... Yeah. Yeah, and if you guys miss, um... If you get, for all those who dream to see me get all negative in at least one episode of Casual Reviews with Bear Rimshot, then this will be the episode for you. And one thing I can promise about casual reviews with Bear Rim Shot, the top 11 dumbest Kingdom Hearts moments, is that it will not beat the record for the longest running casual reviews with Bear Rim Shot episode of all time. That is for sure. Anyways, um. Yeah, also, um. Coming soon on Martin Luther King Jr. Day, I have a downfall parody coming up soon. And, um. And on February 5th. Coming soon on f February 15th, another Steamed Hams dub will be made. Only this time being based on. Return to Neverland. And when my birthday comes on March 12th, I plan on doing a viewer's choice for Steam Ham's dubs. And here are the five that you can typically vote for for what you'd love to see me do a Steam Ham's dub for released on my birthday. Donald Duck, which I know a um, grand majority are probably going to be voting for anyways. My Little Pony, Lazy Town, SpongeBob SquarePants, or Family Guy. please. Okay. Anyway, so yeah, um, if, so yeah, for those who don't know, I felt like for my birthday in three months from now, I felt like doing a viewer's choice. Will you guys feel like do voting for any of the five following dubs you guys want to see? The so first choice you guys have would be Donald Duck, which I'm sure a majority of you. I'm probably going to be voting for. 
However, for those who think I should do My Little Pony, and yes, people, My Little Pony is an option. Or if you're looking for a Nickelodeon choice, there is SpongeBob SquarePants. Or if you're looking for a Nick Jr. choice, you can vote for you may vote for Lazy Town if you want. Or if you want to get all edgy with me, you might as well vote for Family Guy. The link to the poll will be down in the description below. Anyways, um, now you guys may be wondering whether or not a Magfest vlog will happen. Well, maybe. We'll have to wait and see. There are some major things I would love, a lot of major things I need to address with you guys. Now, first off, let's do a recap from the last updated vlog I made. Oh yes, people, I am going there this time. Okay, now the reason why I feel like doing a recap from my last updated vlog is apparently, as you can probably can tell, there are, pe there are certain people out there whose names I'm not gonna mention would be mistaken when it comes to certain things I talked about in my last update vlog. Now, first off, let's... First off, let's talk about this. Now, I'm sure when you saw my... When you guys saw my last update vlog, you'll notice that I did mention Azuchi Guardian in there one way or another, right? However, despite... That fact, um, it is worth acknowledging that, um, it is worth acknowledging that, um, that when I talked about Izuchi Guardian in my last update vlog, just be lucky there weren't any major lies I needed to counter, that a person needed to counter as, say, with the spring and summertime this year. Because the only reason why I did have some lies I, I needed to counter, both during the spring and summertime of 2018, is because, as you guys can probably tell, at that time there were a lot of lies. For the case of spring 2018, there were some laws I needed to counter, which was made up by Zuchi Guardian back last Christmas. Whereas, whichever ones I had to counter during the summertime, I did need to count. They, they also made up, they, they were all back also last Christmas. However, if I countered them all, if I countered every single lie Zuchi Guardian made up last Christmas for this past spring, then I wouldn't have any have my shit to counter. Yeah. So yeah, when I did my last update vlog, just be lucky. There was nothing I had to counter whatsoever. However, the only reason why I brought him up is considering of how well Now, there are two things I've talked about within the world of social media I just knew I needed to address really, really badly. And, um... And, uh, yeah. And what I did have to talk about what went wrong behind the scenes. Um, yeah, well, what I did have to bring up what went, um, what I did have to talk about why I bothered doing change the channel in the first place 
I just knew I had to be honest with you guys, you know. That's what I am, you know. I come to tell things as it is, you know. I always try to be honest with you guys, you know. I always wanted to be honest with you guys, you know. But, you know. Also, um... When I personally brought up on social media, especially on both Facebook and on Twitter, on how I was regarding what my reaction to how was regarding what it felt in regards to when I released a new episode of Casual, the latest episode of Casual Reviews of Breaking what is a public apology? It just. Yeah, I mean, let's be honest here, that is, Yuji Garden is that mentally ill, you know? And it's just a major shocker for myself to get more dislikes than likes, you know? For I really, really, really did work my butt off making that entire episode for three friggin' years. Yeah. No wonder why Yuji Garden loves to be a big baby over... When I need, when I want to move on, when I feel like moving on from him. Speaking of which, which also answers the age old question How has Uchi Guardian stole casual reviews with Bear Rim Shot? Since I always say that as Uchi Guardian stole casual reviews with Bear Rim Shot, right? And he has it. Being changed, has it been called classical comeback, for example? How is that possible? Well, okay then. If I can be very honest with you guys on how Azuchi Guardian stole casual reviews with Barum Shot, even if he may have it called classical comeback, let's keep this long story short. Let's just say, as you guys can probably tell about Azuchi Guardian's personality as a human being, he is a slick hustler. Let me tell you all that for a fact. When it comes to Azuchi Guardian, he is a slick hustler. He is such a slick person to be around, you know? And I'm, re I'm really not making that part up about Azuchi Guardian. He is that slick of a... He can get very slick with you, like what he did with me. Yeah. I mean, that's what is Uchi Garden is. He, he likes to get all slick with people, especially with me, personally. Which definitely does explain why I feel like going all changed. Which definitely does explain why I've personally had no choice but to be a part of the Change the Channel bandwagon when Change the Channel became such a big deal within the online viewing reviewing community. This is the moment where I would have no choice but join the band of reviewers who would go all Change the Channel in some Change Channel in general. Only this time, I wouldn't necessarily be going Change Channel on Doug Walker. Or anyone, if, let alone anyone affiliated with him, like like Mitchard, for example. But rather going after Zuchi Guardian for causing lots and lots of drama. Yeah, and enough talking about Zuchi Guardian for right now. Enough talking about. The atrocity of Azuchi Guardian for right now. Well, let's move on to talking about the atrocity, or should I say the horrors, of Chris Etrada. Oh, yes, people, I'm going there for a very good reason now. Now, the only bring on, well, I wanted to remind, the, the only reason why I bring, I bring up Chris Etrada in this one, this update vlog, is because, well, I just wanted to remind you all that when I talked about Chris Etrada, in my last update vlog, um, I just wanted to remind you all about of how, um, 
about of how that, let's just say, at the time when I did my last updated vlog, it was pretty relevant for me to be able to talk about, um, for me to be able to talk about sharing my, sharing my personal experience with Chris, you know? Considering of how, yeah, he is a controversial figure towards the anime fandom like myself. Even though the only reason why I lost my friendship with Crazy Charter was all thanks to Kyo Korger, who was being nothing more than a major Azuchi Guardian fanboy at best. But, yeah. And, um... And, um... Yeah. And if I could add any additional notes in regards to my controversy surrounding Chrissy Trotter in general, well... Yes. Now, you know how when I mention my latest controversy I've personally gone through with Chris in regards to of how that when he got the epic battle stream and he went from Andros to Ridley by having him to be a full-fledged character. Yeah, well, I have to admit about myself when it comes to Chrissy try to be a full-fledged character in epic battles. Not only what I would go claim that he went from Andros to Ridley, but also, um, it's where it would get me jokingly think that as if Chrissy tried to dare rape any of the following characters. Waluigi, Shovel Knight, Bomberman, Jane from Return to Neverland, King Louie, Lisa Simpson, Marge Simpson, Velma, Daphne, Fred, Shadow the Hedgehog, um, Mario, Snake, Saruman, and Peach. You guys may be wondering, how could I jokingly imagine if Chris Trotter dare rape any of those particular beloved characters? And that's a great question. If you understand your crossover history, you'll get what I mean. But for those who don't know, allow for me to explain myself. Okay, um, with the case of Waluigi, um, Let's just say, um, 
ever since when Super Smash Brothers Brawl came in, when Nintendo and Masahiro Sakurai both feel like inventing assist trophies, pretty much Pokeball made for non Pokemon characters who cannot be playable. This is the moment where Waluigi would remain as an assist trophy. Even up to this day, which is a which is a pretty shame, pretty, pretty major shocker, considering of how well, when it comes to Waluigi, well, let's be honest here, he's that likable. So no wonder why Nintendo would have to make Waluigi and remain an assist trophy for life. But I'll give him one thing, at least Masahiro Sakurai does, at least Sakurai does not hate Waluigi, thankfully, you know. And besides, if, you, if you're really, really that desperate to be able to use Waluigi for any of your play table games to play, and yes, this also includes Toy Box Stadium as well, don't forget Waluigi already got his own amiibo figure. Regardless if he gets to be in Playboy and Smash or not. Yeah. And then, um... And then, where is with the case of Bomberman? If you're a regular viewer on Source Gaming, then chances are it is worth noting that Bomberman already clearly does carry history with Nintendo in general. Does carry history not just in the world of gaming but all as a whole, but also Nintendo as well. Hell, it is worth noting that Bomberman didn't indeed make it to be number one out of the top out of Source Gaming's top 10 most likely third-party characters in Smash for Switch. At least I don't, we don't have to blame Nintendo for that, but rather Konami, which is a major shocker, since Konami was already nice enough to allow Nintendo to be able to use both Snake and Simon Belmont. And Richter as well. And, um, and, um, and then, of course, with the case of Shovel Knight, well, let's just say, um, let's just say, when it comes to Shovel Knight, um, not only did he get his own amiibo figure, which is what happens to every character that makes it as a playable character in Smash in general, but also, um, but also, because that Shovel Knight already managed to get his own amiibo figure, that's what would have resulted him to be a major crossover icon. Which would be considered as a key aspect to why characters like Ryu and Cloud both made it into Smash. Yeah, that's how I see on how why someone like Cloud Strife from Final Fantasy VII can make it into Smash Brothers. Despite the fact that upon his upon the upon his arrival towards the world of Smash, that we never got to see Final Fantasy VII release on Nintendo consoles. However, after Smash Ultimate, until after Smash, although we never got to see Final Fantasy VII come out on, on any Nintendo consoles at, at the time, considering of how that well, let's be honest. The only reason why Final Fantasy VII never 
got a Nintendo 64 port would be due to technical limitations the Nintendo 64 had compared to the PlayStation. Which would also mark the same good reason why characters such as Metal Gear Solid, um, Soul Edge, and the first three Tekken games all saw a PlayStation release, but not a Nintendo 64 release. And, um, yeah. Even if Final Fantasy VII at one point never saw, sadly never saw a, a, a release on a Nintendo console at the time when Nintendo was making Smash 4, at the same time, when, if, there's any, if there's any good reason why I would rather see more of Cloud in Smash than Ridley in Smash, well, let's just say... It's worth pointing out that Cloud is indeed a major crossover icon, you know? Which is a trait Ryu has as well as... Which, which is a trait that Ryu would have. Even Ken has that trait too, as well as Shovel Knight, you know? It would definitely mark up really good points of how characters such as Chun-Li, Heihachi, and Ezio all can be in Super Smash Bros. Why is that? Not only do they all carry game history, but also, they, but also, they all live up to be major crossover icons. With Ezio, surely he may not be as big as big of a crossover icon as say Ryu, Chun Li, Heihachi, or Shovel Knight. But at the end of the day, he's still passable. He still made a spot in Soul Calibur for Christ's sake, which also included Heihachi and fellow Smash veteran Link. Whereas with the cases of, say, Jane and King Louis. Now, if you're a Disney fan like... If you're a huge Disney fan like I am, you ever noticed if you follow on Disney crossovers in general, whether it be done as either a TV show or a movie or a video game or whatever, now, have you guys ever noticed this running gag where whenever Disney feels like doing a major crossover project, whether it be done as either a TV show, or as a movie, or as a video game, then chances are two characters from you would not see participate in cross in any of Disney's major crossover projects would be Gene from Return to Neverland and King Louie from The Jungle Book. Both of whom are ironically likable, you know? And when I say they they both tend both Jane and King Lou tend out tend to miss out every crossover project Disney would work on, and yes, people, this also includes projects like Epic Mickey, for example, and Disney Infinity as well. Which is a total shame, considering if I'm going to speak about Jane, she's that likable. And what can I say, people? I love Jane. And the thing that really does bug me about how Disney treating Jane in general, especially when you have John Lasseter in charge of Disney, is the fact that Disney in general, as you guys can see, not just with crossover projects Disney would work on, but also the same thing can also be said about the world of merchandising, the world of merchandise in general, like with Legos, Pop Toys, or that kind of stuff. Um, Disney would always treat Jane as if she were to be the Disney version of Waluigi. Really? Disney, you're going to treat Jane as if she is the Disney version of Waluigi? That's just sick. Because, hell, it is worth noting that when that fell in the coat, um, did a video talking about who is more, which Disney character is better, Jane or Melody, in which I personally, Patreon, requested for the record. That friend of the code did say, and I quote, Jane is better, you know? And, and it's no surprise when Return to Neverland was first made, was first released, it started out getting a theatrical release. Surely, I mean, on make it part of the Walt Disney Animated canon, but no matter what you think about Return to Neverland, 
the end of the day, not only is it a Disney movie, but also it's one of the very few Disney sequels in general to ever get a theatrical release. Why did they do that? Well, let's just say it was. Let's just say it was such a really good movie. You know, surely it has. Surely it's too bad they couldn't bring back the crocodile. But at the end of the day, I do love the character of Jane. You know. I would absolutely love it if Dizzy can give Jane more love. Whereas with the case of King Louie, well, the only reason why Dizzy hasn't been bothering using King Louie much would all come down to the fact, well, back during the 2000s, Disney got sued over having... Over having King Louis sound like the original voice, suit over using King Louis back when, back when they were doing Tailspin. Considering the fact, well, that when Jim Cummings got to voice King Louis in there, he sounded too good, so good up to the, up to the point that Disney would get outright sued for using King. Louis from King Louis, and at the same time, and for a while, there was a one. And during the 2000s, there was once a certain time period where Disney could not include King Louis. However, when we speak about how King Louis' history in crossover media came out to be, unlike Jane, things didn't always turn out that way. For he was considered getting a House of Mouse episode. For, fully focusing on him. However, Dis however, um, Disney got sued. Disney could not use him as a full-fledged character, and instead, instead they had to create a new character simply known as King Larry. No joke about that, people. It's true. And, um, yeah. Whereas with the cases of Mario and Snake, well, considering the fact, well, oh, but I almost forgot to mention that when it comes to King Louis, after the, the estate of the original voice actor sadly passed away, this is the moment where Disney can now finally use, do whatever the hell they want, can finally use can finally do whatever they want to do with King Louis, even though it is a major shocker to see that King Louis sadly never got a Disney Infinity figure even up to this day. And we even never got to see him in the world of Wreck-It Ralph as well. But, yeah, um, whereas with, speaking of Wreck-It Ralph, with the case of Mario and Snake, you know, with the case of Mario alone, during the, during, in the first record, Ralph, we did get to see Bowser in there. However, at the same time, we didn't get to see um, Mario appear as a full-fledged character. Considering we found that the folks at Disney couldn't figure out a good idea surrounding Mario. Well, he was supposed to appear in Ralph Breaks the Internet. However, as Nintendo been collaborating with Universal to make a Super Mario Brothers movie. This is the moment where, um, this is the moment where it would, this is the moment where Mario would still be absent one again, once again in Ralph Breaks the Internet. Which is a total shame considering of how, when it comes to Mario, he is a video game icon. Whereas with the case of Snake, Considering the fact, well, that he did, and well, we may not have seen Snake as a full-fledged character in Wreck-It Ralph, we did get to see an exclamation point that appears in, in the from the Metal Gear Solid games appearing in Wreck-It Ralph, which is a total shame. Considering of how that when it comes to Snake, up to that point. Snake already lived up to be a major crossover icon, thanks to his presence in Super Smash Bros. Brawl. 
as well as in a fighting game made by Konami themselves. But, yeah. And, um... Whereas with the cases of Shed with the cases <clears throat> with the cases of Shadow, well um, considering the fact, well, he's also that likable as well. Even though there are other Sonic characters who there may be other Sonic characters who deserve to be in Smash as well, or get a legged immense figure like Tails, Knuckles, Amy Bowes, or Dr. Eggman, when considering an Echo Fighter for Sonic the number one character who will always get to be thought of as a deserving Echo Fighter of Sonic has been and will always be Shadow. Yeah, and just like with Waluigi, he still remains, Shadow still remains as an assist trophy once again. Whereas in the cases of, say, Velma, Daphne, Fred, Lisa, Marge, and Saruman, and The Flash, they all went out missing. They all didn't get Lego Dimensions figures, despite the fact that there was, despite the fact that the worlds of The Lord of the Rings, The Simpsons, and Scooby Doo were all represented in the world of Lego Dimensions. Whereas with the case of Peach, considering the fact, well, <clears throat> that once upon a time when Activision felt like collaborating with Nintendo to use some of Nintendo, Nintendo's characters as guest characters in a Skylanders game in the form of Skylanders or Superchargers, one of the characters considered who sadly didn't make it in the final cut that said had to be omitted for whatever reason would include Peach. And as Peach does get to appear in Skylanders, as Peach does get her own Skylanders figure, her Skylanders name is supposed to be Warrior Princess Peach. And you know, although I do agree with Daz from Did You Know Gaming that Peach is indeed really hardcore, at the same time, well, when it comes to a character like Peach, well, let's just say Peach already got plenty of Toys to Life figures I could have used to make Battle of the Groups as a digital board game. I mean, for Peach, we already got we already got a regular Super Mario Amiibo fig Amiibo. Regular Super Mario, Mario Amiibo figure of Peach. We also got a Super Smash Brothers Amiibo of Peach. As well as, an, we also got another Peach Amiibo figure, only this time based on how Peaches went, based on how Peach, <clears throat> based on how Peaches when she appears in her wedding outfit in the game Super Mario Odyssey. Yeah. So I wouldn't necessarily need another Toys to Life figure of Peach. Unless Nintendo themselves, I mean, I mean unless if Nintendo, say, feels like making a, um, if Nintendo were to make, say, an amiibo figure of, um, If Nintendo were to make an amiibo figure of, say, Cat Peach, I'd be open to the idea of Nintendo... I'd be open to buy a Cat Peach amiibo and a Tanuki Mario amiibo only if Nintendo feels like making them. I'd buy them with my own money. 
But at the same time, we already got plenty of Peach Amiibo figures, and we already got plenty of Mario Amiibo figures as well, but yeah. Any, and you know who else? You know who's another character Chrissy Trotter would rape? You know Goku from Dragon Ball Z? Yeah, I'd say that considering of how, well, when, when people in this world feels like, well, when, if, when people feel like, when people within the Smash community in general feels like requesting any non-video game characters, to be in Super Smash Brothers, the number one non-video game character in general who would always get the most amount of requests to be in Smash would be none other than Goku. However, at the same time, it is worth acknowledging that Super Smash Brothers creator Masahiro Sakurai already said no to the idea of manga characters joining. It is worth acknowledging that Masahiro Sakurai already said that manga characters will not join the battle, and although he has no problems including non-Nintendo characters in general, it's not going to be everybody and anybody, you know? And, um, yeah. Now, let's get on to some new things I have to address with you guys. If you guys have been watching me a lot recently, then chances are you may have noticed that when I feel like ranting about Azuchi Garden one way or another, I always like to proclaim them to be an ugly rapist. Guys, excuse me one sec, please. Thank you. Okay, then. Anyways, as I was saying, you guys may be wondering why what I think is Uchi Garden to be an ugly rapist. Well, Technically, there are five good reasons why I would think such a thing on Azuchi Guardian, and I literally mean it. Now, the first, or should I say the biggest reason that would make me feel like claiming such a thing on Azuchi Guardian all comes down to how Azuchi Guardian's been treating the entire My Little Pony fandom in general. Now, this is not to say that hating on My Little Pony in general is necessarily a bad thing at all, far from it. It's just that, well, there are appropriate ways of how you can hate on My Little Pony, and you have an appropriate ways on hating on My Little Pony. And based of how Azuchi Garden would always proclaim his hatred over My Little Pony, it's just really He's really all just stretching it, you know? So, well, let's just say he th thinks all bronies are gay. Now, as I personally pointed out before, not only do you have bronies who have girlfriends like myself, for example, and he would two more, but also at the same time, there are bronies out there who can be homophobic as well. Like I said before, I am not making that part up at all. There are, there can be such thing as bronies who can be homophobic. So there's, there's no way in hell all bronies can be gay, you know? There are those who can be straight like myself. As well as some who can be homophobic. But, yeah, and the second reason would include how Azuji Guardian been poorly treated? How Azuji Guardian reacted to the moment when Huey Toon Moore sadly didn't include all trying in his top 11 tear drinking songs in an animated feature? 
I mean, as sad as it is to see Huey two more, not consider including I'll Try It in his top 11 terror-jerking songs in an animated feature. At the same time, based on how he would have reacted to that, he would have been all inappro sexually inappropriate with Huey on that, you know? Yeah. And, um, and then the third reason on how is it regarding proof that he's an ugly rapist would include. How you, I mean, I mean, no, not you two more. I mean, the third reason why Izuchi Guardian did prove that Izuchi Guardian is because be an ugly rapist would be how he's been treating, how he re, would have reacted to the fact that Animat included Return to Neverland in his top 10 best animated sequels. And as uh, sad as it is for me, for Adam, see, sad, sad it is to see, you know, it's just for me to see that Adam had refused to include Return to Neverland in his top 10 best animated sequels countdown. At the same time, yeah, based on how Wizard of would have reacted to that, inappropriate, I will say. And yeah, you know, if you two and I might both hate Return to Neverland, I'm fine with it. In all honesty, you know, everybody's gonna have different opinions, and that's life. Even though with the case of you two more, he actually likes Return to Neverland. No joke. For he did already admit that in his top twelve um worst animated Disney songs countdown. And, um, yeah, and for the fourth reason would include Victor Chung. What is it you treated Victor Chung years ago before I considered collaborating with him? Now, back before I started making, started collaborating with the Zushi Guardian, um, there was once a certain time period when a good friend of someone, a good friend of mine by the name of Victor Chung, feels like collaborating with the Zushi Guardian, just to hang out and such. But then, for some reason, Azuchi Garden filmed a video with Victor Chung in it. And based on what he did with Victor on his part, he portrayed Victor as if he was naked while still wearing a bathing suit. And it's just pedophilic, based on what Azuchi Garden did to Victor, you know? That is why Victor stopped. Hang, seeing him, let alone hanging out with him because of that. And because of how he's been horribly treating me for life as well. But, yeah. Anyways, um... And now, um, speaking of sexual misconducts within the online reviewing community, 
let's get into the season social media spotlight. Only this time discussing surrounding the controversies I've personally gone through. Surrounding the one and only Morgan Ledger. Now, for those who don't know, I'm a huge fan of... I was a huge fan of Morgan for a while. But for some reason, lately there are things about Morgan that's been bugging me lately, you know? And I'm here to address them all with you guys right now. And when I made my complaints in regards to Morgan lately, oh boy, did they become such a big deal within the online reviewing community, which I never thought it would be. But anyways, here we go. You guys may be wondering where the hell I got the idea that Morgan is not just a pedophile, but also an anti semite as well as somebody who treats animation as if it were to be a kid's genre lately. Now, if I can be very honest with you people about that, and yes, all that is just because of what Morgan thinks about Azuchi Guardian. Not that hating on Azuchi Guardian in general, or let alone not caring about him is necessarily a bad thing. However, there are appropriate ways of how we could have hate on Azuchi Guardian. And saying that I created Azuchi Guardian is not an appropriate way of hating on Azuchi Guardian at all. Because truth be told about myself, I really did not make up Azuchi Guardian at all. Okay, it may be true that I have more subscribers. Okay, I may have. It may be true that I may have more subscribers than Azuchi Guardian. However, as much as you are mathematically correct that I do have more subscribers than Azuchi Guardian. At the same time, it is worth acknowledging that Azuchi Guardian has been on YouTube way long before I joined YouTube. I am not going to lie to you all when I say that. It's all fact right here. And plus, it is also worth acknowledging that Azuchi Guardian and I are both polar opposites one way or another. A lot of me to explain how in this case. Okay. Now, have you guys ever noticed that I can do high voices? Like this? If you want to hear how low I can go, this is how low I can go. Yeah. So as, as you guys can tell about me, if I were in, in the chorus right now, I'd be more of, say, um, either an alto at highest or a tenor at lowest. That's what my range is. With, with the case of Zuchi Kuri, he'd be more of a baritone or a bass. Some other things also worth different, also worth pointing out that the route between me and Azuch is in terms of costumes, based on how I handle my own costumes, especially as a reviewer, is normally different, as you guys can see. Well, that is if you've been watching me for a long time anyways. Whereas when taking a look at Azuchi Guardian, on the other hand, he has a sig his own signature costume, where he wears a hat and, and sunglasses. Now, when I make my own videos, I don't wear any of that stuff. Nothing against that stuff, personally. Just a well, yeah. And um, yeah. 
also, um, another thing that differs that's different between me and a Zucci Guardian is the fact, well, based on how I eat bone chicken, I always eat it with my bare hands. Whereas based on how Zucci Guardian eats bone chicken, he always eats it with a fork. No joke. Really. A Zucci Guardian really does eat bone chicken with a fork. And, um, another thing that's also different between me and a Zucci Guardian is I'm always open to improve myself when I need to. Whereas Zucci Guardian, on the other hand, refuses to improve himself even when he needs to, from time to time. Surely he could if he wants to, but he most likely refuses to. And, um, another thing that's also different between me and Azuchi Guardian is that I'm always respectful towards when others have different opinions, but Azuchi Guardian is not always like that. And, um, and, um, Um, yeah, and, um, and, yeah. And if you really, really think, then if you really, really still think that I still made up Azuchi Guardian, you're just saying it just because of the following reasons. One, considering the fact that, true, I have more subscribers than Azuchi Guardian, but like I said before, the fact that I have more subscribers than Azuchi Guardian still does not excuse the fact that Azuchi Guardian has been on. YouTube long before I have. So consider me as Bugs Bunny and Azuchi Guardian as Porky Pig or Daffy Duck. If you know what I mean, but if you know your Looney Tunes history now. And, um,. And, um, and, uh, yeah. So, yeah, you can might as well call me Bugs Bunny and the Zuchi Guardian, Daffy Duck, or Porky Pig. But, yeah. And three, I mean, two, Considering his appearance in epic battles. Now the reason why someone like Luigi Guardian can be in epic battles is pretty much the same reason why people like Adamat, Juwario, Angry Joe, or some jerk with a camera all can be in epic battles. What do they all have in common? Well, let's just say um, they all have, they all exist beyond the world of epic battles. And besides, as I've personally always stated, if someone, something, or someplace does not exist outside of the world of epic battles, then it doesn't exist within the epic battles canon. Which means with fictional characters, they have to already exist, one way or another.
and um, yeah. And three, Ethan Brown and Mr. Harden both told you so. If you guys don't know who the hell Ethan Brown and Mr. Harden are, consider yourselves lucky. Because when it comes to Ethan Brown and Mr. Harden, let me tell you, they're both like Hitler to the cartoon community. That's what they both are. And we speak about Ethan Brown alone. There's a lot I've had to complain about when it comes to Ethan. More things. Like, for example, Ethan loves looking at my penis, which, um, Ethan always wants to look at my penis, but, yeah. I always try to say no as much as I can. Another controversial thing I also have with Ethan, another thing I also hate about Ethan Brown nowadays is the fact that, um, one time Ethan asked me to let him use my Netflix account, but I had to say no to that because if I said yes, I could get in a lot of serious trouble with my parents. And, um, and another thing that also went wrong with Ethan, you know, when speak about Ethan Brown and Mr. Harden, they're both those same exact friendship bozos who would go, who'd love to angrily and me for wanting myself to hang out with someone who would go say yes to the idea of things like My Little Pony, Thomas the Tank Engine, Blues Clues, and Sesame Street all popping up in crossovers, as well as at the same time saying no to the idea of things like Guardians of the Galaxy, Deadpool, um, Guardians of the Galaxy, Deadpool, Disney's One Saturday Morning programming, Disney Channel programming, Disney XD programming, and Fire Emblem. And when I say Disney Channel and Disney XD, um, we're not just talking live action shows, we're also talking, and this also includes animated shows as well. I know, it sucks considering of how that you have, considering the fact that you have Kim, people who love Kim, watching Kim Possible, which ended up being, being the highest rated Disney Channel TV show of all time. And plus, there are some that did get crossover episodes like Lilo and Stitch the series and Phineas and Ferb. And, yeah. And, yeah. Speaking of which, um, that's also another issue I have with Ethan would be when he when Ethan, um, one time I, while I was still saying, saying, Chris, I did tell him about two game ideas I wanted to make for myself. And oh boy, did Ethan angrily insult me when I want to make those games for myself whenever I feel like him. Now the first one being a game based on death battle. When I say I wanted to make a game based on death battle, I don't necessarily mean a battle of the groups game based on death battle. I'm talking about a full fledged video game based on death battle. So yeah, and then, um, Ethan asked me whether or not I'm going to be making money, any money based off the game, and I had to say, I, and I said no, because the reason why I had to say no to that is because as, me, as much as it may be nice and we will earn some good old money, at the same time, the biggest downfall there can be 
in making um a, making a game that that no one keeps making money, making you pay to play a game I made would all come down to the fact, well, as you guys can probably tell, it contains lots of copyrighted content. And plus, it is worth acknowledging that if you want to mess around with with Rooster Teeth side peas, you definitely have to make sure that it's all personal, make it all personal, and make it free to watch or play. Which means if I really, really wanted to make Battle of the Groups, and, and, I mean, if I really wanted to make Death Battle into a video game, I have to make sure it's free to play. Considering the fact you have a lot of copyrighted characters appearing, you know. But, yeah. And, um. And, um, yeah, in another video game I also talked to Ethan about. A video game idea I talked to Ethan about when I was at St. Chris would be, um. would be my dream game to make Battle of the Groups. Now, what can I say to people other than I am so excited about making Battle of the Groups? Anyways, as I did feel like having to start out as a tabletop game, Ethan would go angrily insult me over the fact that that no, and would go tell me that Nobody plays tabletop games, which I find to be a lie, I will admit, you know. There are people in this world who do love playing tabletop games that exist even up to this day. And if you think nobody plays tabletop games, perhaps you never went to Westchester Geeks events before. Because if you ever went to any gaming events that Westchester Geeks does, you'll notice that they play tabletop games too. Um, over here in West Cheshire County, we have a gaming group that West Cheshire County in general does, you know? And, you know, um, when I feel like, um, so yeah, I mean, there's a good reason why I feel like making Battle of the Goose into a tabletop game for us. And don't worry, people. I can promise you all the fact that a video game based on Battle of the Groups will indeed happen soon. However, the reason why I feel like having it start off as a tabletop game will be now, as you guys can probably see right here, in terms of studying certain characters that have made their ways to the world of epic battles um, in general, for um, the tabletop game incarnation, there are way less characters appearing. There are way there will be way less characters I would need to research on than say the video game incarnation because the video game incarnation, I have to study literally on everybody who has ever been in epic battles in general. And yes, people, even the most bizarre characters who has ever been in epic battles. And whereas with the case of say the tabletop game incarnation, not only do they need to get the epic battle but also more importantly, they need to have a toy. So I figure, where at least one, this one toy that's actually a tank, that already, a, but also a toy. So I figure, where at least an officially licensed toy that already exists, that's attainable, no matter, no matter how rare they can be to find. So yeah. So I was doing my mathematics myself when, in terms of how many characters I would need to study for the tabletop game. They're way less than compared to the video game. I am not making that part up. That is a fact right here. For the tabletop game, there are way less characters I need to study on than, say, the video game. I know this could be a shocker. For all of you here, especially if you're an Epic Battles fan watching this, but it's true. But, yeah.
And now, time to get to my other complaint I've been having in regards to Morgan lately. Where, um, you guys may be wondering why I think Azuchi Guard, I mean, no, I mean, why, how I feel Morgan Ledger is, has been very supportive towards Azuchi Guardians that he see one way or another when he doesn't. Okay, if I can be very honest with you, um, if there are any good reasons how I feel like it could be one besides the potato joke that's been tossed off from from Asian Shade, even if it's drawn inspiration by a cartoon called Count Duckula. Yeah, well, there are three major instances of how Morgan proved to be a major Zuchi Guardian fanboy outside of Asian Shade. The first one being in regards to, um, it all started way back during summer 2015 when I already broke ties with his Uchi Guardian and at the same time already started making casual reviews with Baron Shot. What is a public apology? Anyways, following my gratitude with an amazing success I had doing birthday matches videos, particularly one with one I did on Animat the year beforehand, I felt like if I did have free time, I'd be willing to do more, and there I did. I made two more birthday message videos, both of which were apology videos at best. The first one that I made would be to Jaime 2. Things were successful in the beginning, but then when Azuchi Garden kicked in, the moment where he ruined, screwed everything up, by bad mouthing, I played the clarinet, thus resulting him to get bitter with me again because of that. And then, of course, I also did one based on Morgan. Well, it may seem to like it, and this is a moment where Zuchi Garden would go kick in and feeling like getting him bitter against me again after I did a nice birthday message video. So then, fast forwarding towards March 2006, and I then learned from my mixtape, then Morgan and I made you both felt like getting bitter with me again. Most likely, all thanks to the fact of how that Azuchi Guardian must have done some things to ruin Hamitu's birthday and Morgan's birthday back then. So then, fast forward, and then the second instance when Morgan does did indeed support Azuchi Guardian's idiocy would be when um would be when would be when I did my final monthly update vlog for June 2016. Now as now when I did my June 2016 update vlog I did talk Morgan in there, right? Yet, though, I really tried to be nice to him as much as I can, you know? But next thing you know, as revealed, and as Azuchi Guardian did reveal last Christmas, that Azuchi Guardian is the evil... I mean, I mean, Azuchi Guardian is the person who would go make Morgan not only to think negative thoughts on when I did not only go all cinema sins over when I... Did my June 2016 update vlog talking about him, but also at the same time, uh, even as Uchi Guardian is the person who deserves all the blame for for not letting for not for not only did Azuchi Guardian make Morgan think negative thoughts about my June 2016 update vlog, but also at the same time. Azuchi Garden also did make Morgan not want to do a co-review with me on casual reviews with a bare rim shot anytime soon. Which is a total shame, considering of how that... Well, as you guys can probably tell, both Morgan and I both have common interests, you know? 
Now, if you want to do, um, that's a rule in doing co-review with anybody for that matter. To do co-review, you have to have similar interests, you know? And let's be honest, the only reason why Morgan would only think negative thoughts about my June 2000 update vlog and not refuse to do a co-review with me on my review show is all just because, well, Zuchi Guardian obviously told him so, obviously, but like, yeah. And then the third time something like this occurred, third time that, that Morgan does prove that he supports Zuchi Guardian, so this would all come down to this. Back in February this year, once upon a time, Morgan had his own Curious Cat account. But then fast forwarding towards February 2018, Morgan felt like shutting down his Curious Cat account. And, it, and when he felt like doing so, he accused me of stalking him, which I was, and I was trying to support him, I like it. Um, and you know, um, when you wish, when you speak about the, I, when you speak about the part about me stalking Morgan Ledger, technically all started with Caleb Corger, who is nothing more than a major Azuchi Guardian fanboy. Yep, that's when he is, and that's how I can prove. And that's how I got the idea of how Morgan was being very supportive towards Azuchi Guardian's idiocy one way or another. And yeah, as you guys can probably tell about Morgan's personality, Morgan seems to have, I come to notice, Morgan seems to have this long history where he would go allow anyone who, who has ever bullied me in my life to go put him down when it comes to me. First he got Mr. Ben, when it comes to the moments when I feel like showing Morgan the epic rap battles of history episode, Dr. Seuss vs. William Shakespeare. Second you got Azuchi Guardian, from when I did a nice birthday apology video to Morgan, as well as wishing him the best of luck after he left to Mr. Code back in June 2016. And when Morgan fe felt like shutting down his cat curious cat account. And now you have Ethan Brown and Mr. Harden who both go put um Morgan down in regards to Zuchi Guardian. I know shocking, but it's true. And now, I have something major I need to talk to you guys about. And now I have something major I need to talk to you guys about. Okay. Now, what can I say, people? I love being a reviewer. However, whenever the... Whenever I feel like criticizing anyone for that matter, all I always get is nothing but people think I'm really hurting anyone. Now, whenever I feel like critiquing anyone, I've been getting people feeling like I'm intending to hurt anyone. Now, technically, that was never my intention to hurt anyone at all whenever I feel like criticizing anyone. However, if I did feel like I put you down feeling like I was going to hurt you, all I can say is, I'm sorry. It was never my intention to hurt anyone. All I ever really, really wanted to do is help improve you to make you better. Not to say you're a bad person, though. I'm not sure you mean well, just that, well, yeah. You know how I've been going, I've gone through that myself, you know. And, you know, even I have to deal with all that myself as well, you know? 
I mean, when it comes to the world of critics in general, I mean, there's a reason why critics in general. When it comes to the entertainment world, there's a reason why critics in general exist. They're not just there to angrily insult you the way you are, or stuff like that. Sometimes they're there, they can be there to help to improve you, to make you a better person. Not that you're, not that you're bad or anything like that. Just that, well, yeah. And if you guys don't believe me, take a look at how Yoshi Player handled when he reviewed Anima, for example. Now, when Yoshi Player reviewed Animat, he didn't just angrily insult him based on what he likes or dislikes or stuff like that. For whatever parts Animat got wrong, all Yoshi Player wanted to do is help improve Animat to make him a better person. Not that Animat is a bad person or anything like that, so well, there are some mistakes that have been made. On his end. And. Um, yeah. Take a look at. Anyone who has ever reviewed. 1941. What did they all do. To Steven Spielberg. When it comes to 1941. They helped him improve. Spielberg to make him become a better. Content creator life. This resulting when Spielberg feel like making 1941, they felt like, um, when Spielberg feel like making Ready Player, movie based on the book Ready Player One, as you guys can probably tell about Spielberg's personality making that movie, he would lack Reference to refrain from self-referencing, which is a criticism that Steven Spielberg would always get when making when he made 1941. And yeah, I'm really not gonna lie when I say this. As a critic myself. As much as I'm always open to improve myself when I need to, I really wanted to help people improve when, when I feel they need to, you know? And that's the truth about critics, you know? The reason why critics in general exist, they're not just always going to be there just to angrily insult you, but rather to help you improve to make you a better person even when you mean well, you know? And to close off this season's update vlog, I have something I'd like to talk about. Speaking of which, before I can close off the season's update vlog, I have one more thing I'd like to talk to you guys about. It's this. Okay. Now, if you've been watching me for a long time, ever since I first started making casual reviews of the Paper back in 2014, the chances are you'll notice that if you guys, once you guys luckily sat through all of casual reviews of Paper Shop, was a public apology for yourself, then chances are, um, chances are, you'll notice then chances are you'll notice that I successfully managed to improve myself compared to the first two episodes especially Return to Neverland you know now you guys may be wondering um, how um, You guys may be wondering. You guys may be wondering how. Um, 
what 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 did I do that was so different between what is a public apology and Richard never lived? By the way, I almost forgot to mention, continuing on what I said in my Super Smash Con vlog on why I felt why and by the in case if you're all wondering why I felt like calling my review show casual reviews if you guys want to I'm wondering why I felt like calling my review show Casual Reviews of Bamshaw instead of Teddy's Reviews regardless of what gathers my editor. Well, let's just say, well, I come to notice a lot of you love the idea of... Ever since back when I started making this series, I noticed a lot of you, a grand majority of you, seem to love the idea of calling my review show Casual Reviews of Bamshaw. So I decided to stick with that even up to this day, you know? I noticed... Another thing you, know, you guys also, I know it's another, and one thing you guys also loved about casual reviews with Baron Shad would include the Jewish star rating system. And I'm sure you guys are all probably wondering how come the Jewish star rating system was not present in casual reviews with Baron Shad, what is a public apology? Now, if I can be very honest with you guys, well, let's just say, um, well, let's just say, technically, it just wouldn't make sense, you know? And for those, and to all those who missed the Jewish, missed, for those, for all those who missed out on giving out Jewish stars for casual, from, uh, in an episode of casual reviews of the Bam Shop, I do have great news for you, that the Jewish star rating system would actually return for the top 11 dumbest Kingdom Hearts moments. I mean it. I know I wouldn't necessarily do such a thing, but considering how hard the Kingdom, how hard to review the Kingdom Hearts games can be, might as well do so. And I notice, a, I notice once we speak about the humor, I notice a lot of you always want to make sure I be more clean and making sure I keep everything as relevant to the subject matter of each episode as much as possible, in which I actually did, for what is a public apology. Because as you guys can tell with the humor, with casual reviews of Bamshaw, what is a public apology, not only are the jokes clean, but also they're all relevant as well. And that's all I got for this season for for casual reviews with Baron Shot. I mean, that's all, that's all I got for Winter 2019. I hope you all have a happy new year, and I'll see you in, and I'll see you all in 2019. Bye.